Thank you to my patrons, Trey Crouch and J Dior for making these videos possible. What's going on YouTube? It's Kalsosko back with another video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at this FSU to Carolina Panther swap with Jamie Robinson, a safety from the Seminoles who was picked in the fifth round of the 2023 NFL draft. Throughout this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys the key aspects that you need to implement in order to get a clean, nice swap and just can keep improving as an artist. So let's dive right in. The first thing that you're going to want to do is make the mask. Okay. Without the mask, without someone to control any of the area, it's going to be a lot more difficult to visualize and even have like, I like to separate my background when I'm doing a swap just like this. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is the mask. You just have to get your OG pick. So this is my OG pick layer and I'm going to start by trying select subject. So I go select subject. And select subject can do a pretty good job, but, but with a swap, you definitely want to make sure that your selections are going to be nice. So if they're not good enough after you do select subject, don't worry, don't panic and take it off. What I usually do is go to my pen tool right here. So the shortcut is P with the pen tool. You can click drag and it curves in any direction that you would like. I do have a masking tutorial to go a little bit more in depth with the pen tool, but honestly, you're just going to click through if you need to curve it. Click and hold see how it curves around these edges where it might not have ca captured some of that selection. Once you're done, you right click, make selection, add it to selection. Okay. Just like that. If you wanted to take away from the selection like here, or you see there's a little bit excess that select subject messed up on, which is okay. Kind of just mask that area with the pen tool, right? Click, make selection, subtract from selection. See how that works. And one other important thing that you want to know is you want to have combined shapes on when you're using the pen tool. Now let's say that I fast forward and got all my selection nice and how I wanted to have it. Right? So now this is a nice selection. One thing that you can do first is you can preview a selection. So you hit Q and that lets you preview the selection. See if it's clean. After that, you're going to start, you're going to do this for everything that you want to put into groups. So first things first, we're going to put our mask into a group. So we're going to go here to this folder, click the folder. Now we have our mask still selected and then you're going to hit the layer mask icon down here with that being in there. If I put this OG pick layer into this group, it's only going to read as the layer of selection. So it's not going to go outside of the selection for whatever you put in there. So if I put green, just the green layer, just for example, nothing will go outside of the selection. Now, this is very important that you do this and set up your document in this way, because it's going to eliminate a lot of stress and going to keep you very organized because there's a lot of things that you have to do in Jersey masking and Jersey swapping, which is like helmets. You have your face mask, you got shoulder pads, you have your gloves. So keep your work very organized in this way that I just showcased and name your layer. So this would be again, Jamie mask tutorial. All right. And if you wanted to have the picture in the background, you could just duplicate by hitting control J bring this to the background and see, you still have your background layer. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get a reference board so that we can start noticing what parts of the Jersey we can actually content aware fill or in other terms, just blend in to the subject nicely because we don't need to see that part. Now, what I recommend when doing this is using what I use is called pure reference. I can use, I can put the link in the YouTube description. I'll put it there, but with pure reference, you can take photos and combine them all onto one, one little art canvas. Okay. So you can combine all your photos onto one art canvas and then you can see a lot of things just clear. You can just see a lot clearer. So say if I wanted to put the finished there, I'm just taking this from literally my file explorer. Yeah, Jamie, if we have him, we know that we don't need this big Nike check here. We don't need this ACC. We don't need this logo, which will be replaced. And we also just don't need like the Seminole Scholar patch. So in knowing that, how are we going to get rid of these aspects of the Jersey that we don't need? What I usually like to do is you go on your OG layer that is within the group. And then you're just going to use the pen pencil or polygon lasso tool. They both work in the same way. It's just the pen tool gets a little bit more precise because you can bend it. So you would take the whatever selection tool you'd like and you're going to click around it like this, right? So you're clicking, click, 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 
click click go back to the beginning then you're gonna hit shift f5 and what is this gonna do bring up content aware so you're gonna go to content aware color adaptation opacity hit okay it's like magic all right and then what you're gonna do after that if there is excess see how i left a little bit of excess you could go and use the clone stamp tool with s so you hold down alt or option on the mac click an area that is covered pretty well and close to this area so that the blending is on point and then you can blend over like so or you can take the spot heel brush shortcut j make sure it's on content aware and see it's just like a brush i feel like spot heel gets a little bit more accurate in my opinion let's try it out one more time and i'm going to use my spot heel once again shortcut j so you're going to go in and get all the areas that you will not need and i will say this about it just if you know that a uh, section you don't need for sure just get rid of it but in terms of like the numbers or the collars where you know you're probably just going to cover it up you don't really need to do constant aware or spot heel or anything like that for it because you know you're going to be taking these aspects from a different mask or a different photo that you had on your reference. What you're gonna wanna do is select everything into its own group. And then, uh, this is really showcased with the swap that's actually done. So I put everything into its own little group on the OG mask, not talking about these parts that I took from other masks, but see how, I'm gonna show you guys right now. So see how this face mask, have this face mask group, it just selected to the face mask, right? So how do you do that? I already had showed you when I did the mask, you're gonna make a selection and then put it in its own group. And you're gonna do this for everything. So see, I have the gloves as its own, the pants are its own group, the jersey is its own group, right? And have everything, the mask is its own group once again. So if I wanna do this again, I'm just gonna take this selection because I already have it and I'm not gonna show you guys how to use the pen tool again. So if I had that face mask and I was on my original Jamie layer, I would make group and hit the layer mask icon. Now everything that is in this group is going to be controlled within the selected borders and not go outside of that. So this is the face mask again. You can always add to this selection as well. Don't think that you can't. If you wanted to, you would just go with your whatever tool you're using, like your lasso tool. Say this was just part of the face mask. You would make sure that your color is selected on white down here on the bottom. So you hit D to go to your defaults and then X to swipe between black or white. And then you would hit option delete or alt delete. And this would add to the selection. So if I'm going to add a color, see how everything is gonna be within that group. But it's just to show you guys, you can add to these selections. But what you would do is you would probably put a gradient map here and then blend that however you see you would see fit from your reference image make sure that everything is put into groups when you're gonna go and start trying to swap colors and everything like that stay organized gradient maps are gonna be super key super crucial to what you are doing once again bringing up my pure reference once you start going in with your gradient maps like if we go to the jersey right here and the color before was already kind of black but they have a darker tone of black and this also is going to be reflective of the scene but gradient maps what do they do they go from darkest darkest point to lightest point okay so that's what gradient maps do they go from the darkest to the lightest so what you want to have here is you're going to be your darkest tone so obviously see how that looks weird it's because you have a very light tone at the the dark point or the darkest point of the subject it goes to the lightest point which would be white technically for your highlights but through here you can drag these sliders and add different colors different tones and this can bring out highlights of the subject see how if you go too close to your own points it gets a little bit grainy it gets a little too grainy so you want to make sure you have a nice blend going here so if i wanted to get that that black blend and that black jersey looking realistic that's why i have different points so i bring this up a little bit farther from black right and then I bring this one up even a little bit farther and then I can play around on the highlights of the subject. And what you want to know about this diamond right here, this is the feather. So this is how harsh the next color is going to come on. So 
See how that looks very harsh and pixelated? That's because I didn't let this breathe. You want to let your points in between your gradient map breathe, okay? So let them breathe and pick those points and you got to play around with it until you get something that you like. But you do want to make sure that they blend in pretty well with the other assets that you're going to be putting on top. Like how I put these shoulders on top and things like that. So that's how gradient maps work. Same with, same one with the face mask. It has a nice blend. Now you you got to understand when you get to a point where it looks good. There's no rhyme or re or there's no one exact way i can explain it you just have to know what looks good and this just takes repetition so this next portion is from the actual process that i was going through when doing this and you guys are going to see how i take this like the helmet so i took the helmet from a player i took the shoulder pads from players and then i blend them through blending them through i utilize selective color to select some of the blues that are on there and make sure that those are blending in with the subject in this case jamie robinson and i'm using the curves sliders making sure that my curves in the highlights and shadows are all matched up with each other looking nice bringing out the most realism i can get to make this the best piece that is possible at the time of my skill set that being said as well you want to learn how to use puppet warp and implement puppet warp into whatever you're doing with the piece on the helmet you guys are going to see that I use Puppet Warp to make sure that Jamie Robinson's helmets were matching up and also to blend his, his straps for his chin strap. The chin straps are very important in that they blend together because if not, that's going to be a key vital sign that you don't know exactly what you're doing yet. So you want to make sure those chin straps are lining up with each other. Don't be afraid to lower your opacity a little bit lower in order to get that warp on point. Also, you want to take notice of what type of face mask a player is wearing. That's a big thing that you want to take notice of what face mask is he wearing because every type of player has a specific face mask that they like. So keep the original face mask there if you can and then just blend the, the helmet over the top. The biggest thing with the helmet over the top is just getting the right angle from your reference points. So make sure that you have your peer reference boards out or you just know your angle. You know your angle, you download that exact angle from that exact image. This takes a little bit of research, but it's going to help out majorly. So since the helmet is just a tough part, I'm just going to show you guys right here. I did the, the helmet, so I got the exact angle that I needed, right? But I still need to warp it a little bit. See that original warp, how it's just curved a little bit inside. and. I'm, I'm just going a little bit down, making sure that blends in right there. It's not the perfect blend, but it's so, so subtle that you can barely notice it. And this can actually be edited in post. A, a lot of things don't worry too much about them. You can edit them in post, right? And so this is just with the warp tool. This isn't the, the puppet warp tool. It's just with the warp tool because I knew the angle is like on point. So I just only need a little bit of adjustment and then you can just lower your opacity and kind of see that it matches up very, very nicely. And then the chin strap matches up my, nicely as well. All I had to do here was add a layer mask and then use my black brush. Make sure your brush is on black. Black is going to hide white reveals for layer mask. And then just blend this area in just ever so subtly until that you get to the those final stages where you blend everything in, which leads us into our next stage of just blending things in. I say in a step two way, because now you're gonna see how I blend in a little bit of a more sped up way. I do have blending tutorials on Patreon, and I just dropped the blending tutorial on Patreon last week of Anthony Edwards. It was like a mountain scene, so you guys are gonna see that. If you do support me on Patreon, would, us, would appreciate that, or you can check out some of my older tutorials that I do have how to blend subjects into scene as well, just to save time on this video and get a video that is more focused. The energy is focused on how to blend subjects into backgrounds. So those videos will really help out and you will get something that looks to this extent, a finished piece that really just sells that he is part of this scene, part of the Carolina Panthers as well with the swap and making sure that everything is clean throughout the art process. So as always, I do appreciate you guys 
tuning into this video thank you guys so much make sure you hit the like button let me know if this video helped you share with a friend if it did subscribe today and consider becoming a patron today you guys get all my artwork project files updates on what i'm doing within artistic career in life as well as asset and texture packs monthly with a new month coming up there's going to be a new texture and asset pack for you guys to download always stuff that i am using within my artwork never thinks i'm just searching on the internet and it truly just helps me as an artist and keeps me going so with that being said thank you guys for watching the video it's been calso scope stay scope guys peace